Okay, we're starting all over. I mean, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's David. It's David from uh, <laughs> from the Portland orbit. Uh, you got to excuse me because we had our Christmas party um, and, and we were so busy that we just now we're getting around to having our Christmas party. And so that's what we've been up to. But Saul, we know how busy you are. Right. Yeah, well, well, I know exactly. We've been very busy. And, um, you know, 12 days of Christmas and all that. So that's where we were. Oh, that would be wonderful, Saul. Um, I know, you know, you guys had reached out to me. It's been a bit of a mystery, but you've reached out to me for an interview. And so I'm, I'm glad that I was able to track you down. I have to admit that um, I didn't know much about what you were doing and I'm I'm going right into my first question. Okay, are you ready? Oh, great. Okay. Okay. Wait a minute. It, how did we get the volume going? Just want to make sure it's the highest volume. Gotta do a sound check. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is great. Um, from from what I'm so familiar with, um, for the music, um, I, I felt like that, that seemed like you're inspired um, by the Beatles with your your Beatle influences on your album, and I'm wondering. Um, did you connect with the band? to be saying right there. I, I disagree with that characterization. Well, but I'll continue on. Well, well, then maybe the question is, because my you cut me off with my follow-up question, which was sort of like, it was a two-part question, two questions in one, which is complicated. But did you connect with the band, the Beatles, um, when you first heard them? Partly from different eras, you know, I mean, just because we all grew up in Liverpool, you know, we were born during the bombing, you know, there was a war going on, and uh, I guess they supposedly had similar things, but I, I don't really know their history, I was always more of a Stones guy, you know. A what guy? The Rolling Stones. Oh, not Jerry and the Pacemakers? Mick Jagger in the uh, Rolling Stones. Uh, I'm also a big fan of the Turtles. Very influential. And uh, the Thompson Twins were also a big influence. (laughs) I can imagine twins. Uh, Anything with twins. Um, This um, Tom Lemon collaboration that you've got going on, um, were you uh, trying to do the the whole... What's that? Bonnie Lemon? Tom Lemon? It's not Tom Lemon? There is Tom. That's his dad. Okay, wait a minute. Ronnie. Ronnie. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know where I got that from. But, I mean, are you guys doing the songwriting team thing? Um, We're kind of taking a break from it. There's been a lot of pressure. So uh, we're going to release this album and take a little break. Maybe, maybe get back to it a little later. Well, um, actually, how did you decide uh, which name was going to go first, though? Well, uh, this, this album is very much about me and my life's legacy. Uh, some of these songs I, I wrote by myself in, when I was uh, first teaching myself how to play the guitar. I didn't have any lessons, you know. No one showed me how to do anything. That's why I ended up left-handed with it. <laughs> I, had it. I could even play dobro with my toes, you know. But, <laughs> but uh, back then it was about doing skiffle and, uh, you know. Okay. I, I mean, what what was it about Ronnie, though? I mean, what, what, was, what was it about Ronnie, then, when you first well, encountered Ronnie him? And I met probably about nine. Young lads uh, growing up in Liverpool, and uh, we we met playing the game. It was it was one of his thing. Uh, Connect Four, I believe you you call it over there. 
Yeah. Connect Four. We we met in a Connect Four tournament. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we we were fast friends after I beat him. So yeah. Um, your album. Uh, it feels a lot like uh, the um, I Am Sam <laughs> soundtrack of, I don't know if that was, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but that was a movie where um, Sean Penn plays <laughs> a mentally challenged Beatles obsessive. And so the album is perf- uh, full of performers playing Beatle tunes. Um, have you heard of this movie? I, I have not. I, I have no idea such a thing. You know, but again, these, I don't see what all these Beatles comparisons have anything to do with this work. This is from my own personal life, you know. It talks about the bombings. It talks about growing up in Liverpool. Uh, my friends, like, introduced Cord Benjamin to Ron Lemon. And shortly after the Connect Four tournament, we covered that Ford could make music out of a pickle. Not a pickle, but actual pickle. Oh, man. Yeah, and then so he was... First we started, we changed the skipple group to each of the pickle on the solo. Oh, man. We got our, our feet in the fire there, and, and so this is just an album about a ride and our, you know, going to the uh, the, the Mulligan show and, and the exposure and the Americas that we got and, and all of that, the, Love the pain and in in some great new tracks and old tracks, you know. So I, I I don't see why that should have anything to do with stuff about the Beatles or whatever you call them. You know. I, I just was never into them. I don't know. Okay. Well I mean a lot of people are and um I mean it's I see, you know, I there probably someone there's probably the Paul's probably caught wind of, you know, doing this new thing and uh, about our lives. And he's probably jealous. Him and, and that Yoko, they're probably, uh, you know, desperate to cling to relevancy. So they're trying to cash in on our project, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps, you know? Okay. I mean, no. I I couldn't begin to understand, you know, what they're thinking about, but, um, okay, I, I mean, I... He's a knight, you know, he's a knighted one. Well, I, that... I, he might even be replacing one of the princes, I hear. It sounds like they're doing a little bit <laughs> Pick up some extra work at the palace, yes. Um, I, I don't know, you just... I, I, I was really curious about your Skiffle comments, because it, it seemed to me that um, Skiffle is just was part in part an idea of how kids could just play music without, you know, having to have oh, practically have any gear at all. If you're talking about making music from a, a pickle, um, you know, was... yes, well, it was very difficult for the war, you know, because I mean, I'm, <clears throat> I, I can't say I'm from a different generation and uh, the Falkland Island war was very difficult to get through. Um, we, we had, Noble heroes that survived it, and uh, it shaped. It made we were very poor growing up. We were on the, uh, well, you know, we were we're in the lines, so we're on the dowel, and it, uh, it 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 was very depressing. And so we'd have to use rocks and sticks to, to <laughs> make bones, and that you know. Yeah, just like a piece of string, tie a piece well, of string to a. St- like 30 or 40 years before we discovered it but I I guess what we did with it with the pickle and everything just kind of is what we kept doing we, we tried to reinvent ourselves it's very important to do that you know like when I had to replace I mean when I started this song it, it, it was very you know the, the psychedelic area started a lot of a lot of disinformation got out there but you know yeah, what was your question? Well, um, I actually had a had a whole. Well, I was talking about skiffle, but I mean, I, I I get it. I just it just something that struck me just just the idea that most people would be intimidated or think you have to have a lot of equipment to form a band or whatever. But it sounded like kids were just getting up and trying to make whatever music they could to express themselves. 
Well, uh, sometimes we'd have to compete. We'd throw, you know, it helped if it was a blunt object that could be used as a weapon. Yeah. Be very tough. Uh, you know, yeah. and, uh, it, it, it was really difficult when we started to move into sponges and pillows. We wanted to get that softer sound. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it, it was no good. That was we soft rock? Is that... in our junior years and, and have to fight off for our spots in, in rosters with pillows. Yeah, uh, but that sounds like the origins of soft rock then that, that, was, that came out of California. That's amazing. I hadn't even well, thought about that. Brian Wilson, uh, we were probably very influential on him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I... I feel like I, you know, it's what he says today. I don't know if he would have admitted to that back then, but you know. That's gosh, I had never even thought of that parallel at all either. Um, I I wanted to ask you about the walrus, and is is it a metaphor? What was well, that? You know, I, I suppose for that, that Beatles group it was. We don't, we don't really have any really cute animals in this album necessarily. This is much more about love and peace and understanding and the love that Ron and I shared for each other uh, before he got shot. You know. Okay. Yeah. I. I. Yeah. I didn't want to go there at all. Um, yeah. But well, I did. I, I mean. You know, it, 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 Ronnie getting shot. Could compare that to a walrus, you know, getting washed out into the sea. I guess there's some yeah. similarities there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He got, got shot in the toe, so he got back up and limped, limped onto the shore. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I, I was curious about the rest of the band, um, Chord and. Mako, Mackie, uh, and and Ron, of course. Uh, the cord was my old uh, mate that, that went to, he was a couple years younger than us, and uh, we we matched the uh, Connect Four tournament with Ronnie, and he was he had my back, he was kind of my, my coach, my cheerleader. And then when I beat Ronnie, it was just like, you know, hey, will you join my band? Yes, I will. Uh, can Cord come along? And, and Ron didn't, he rejected him outright. Did that scrawny little thing? I don't think so. What does he do? And, and Cord didn't do anything at that time. And the year or so, and he said, oh, I can, I can play the stickle, you know. So that's sort of how that all came together. Uh, we, we, our drummer was a wonderful lad that we used to have, but... Um, yeah, he's kind of stealing all the ladies, and that was a bit of a problem. So it was, uh, we, well, we, but, I, we fired his ass. Well, my... He was cute Mako, and then, you know, he was cute, but he wasn't as cute as us, you know, so we were all able to get the women and the birds. Well, because the the other drummer before Mako wasn't the best drummer. Right, that's why he needed to go. The wonderful who could really, really keep a beat, but he was getting all the birds' attention. It was... Okay, I just yeah, I just wanted to make sure I I got well, that. You um, walk that around, this good-looking, smiling guy that you know, yeah, yeah, you know, smoke our cigars, playing. He'd he'd go with. Three women that started with us in the evening. They'd all be with him by the end. Um, I was asking about Chord and Mako and about where the names came from. Because you just told me how they met, so... Mako always, uh, you know, it should be pretty obvious. We we came with a Mac and he never took it off. Yeah. truth, I don't really know what's under there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, he did shower with that Mac on. Oh, Mac on. Cat is Mac on. Loves his Mac. It just it was, it was to keep him. His 
mostly got him in the habit of it when he was really young. And he's much older than all of us, but like, yeah, he he wears a mask to the shower anywhere because it rained and he was a sickly child, so they're very worried about him catching a cold. So they always kept the mask on. Um, on the other hand, I, you know, I, I'm not sure. I, it just seems very convenient that he's ultimately be our lead guitar player and that his name is Cord. It just, you know. I oh, just yeah. Him. That's always oh, a nickname then. Nickname? No. He's, no. He's born with, they, they named him that. Weird. They spells it with an E on the end, too. Okay. Okay. Or unique that way. I mean... It's kind of a you gotta have a gimmick and all that, so that's that's good. Um, well, his parents were uh, academics that knew nothing about music. You know, it was just very outside their world economics. Uh, how did you feel about the death of Ron Nasty? Oh, from the Ruddle. Uh, yeah, the prefab um, four, the prefab four, and then the Ruddles. Yeah. Yep. And I'm a big fan of their work. Whoa, whoa, yeah. okay. Uh, Asti was uh, influential in a lot of uh, Ron Lemon's uh, songwriting, for sure, yeah. Okay, oh, cool. Very I good. I have to ask Ron about that. Okay. It's hard to get in touch with the isolated stuff about, you know, that guru rock, Raku. Oh, Okay. Well, I mean, she, it's not like her sitting on my guitar was, you know, gonna. It just made me mad. You get out of here. Why are you sitting on my guitar? You're making it all out of tune. <laughs> yeah, not not a good uh, not a good piece of furniture. Not cool at all. Um. You, uh, did you have anything that you wanted to add? I know. Actually, I'm going to repeat that because. Uh, I, I appreciate this so much, Saul, and I know that uh, the people that I talked to were saying 10, 15 minutes. I try to limit you know, my interviews to three questions, which is impossible with a guy like you. No, I, I fully understand. My management told me this would be only be like two minutes, but I called and uh, spoken so highly of the Portland Orbit, <laughs> and we wanted to give you a fair shot. And- tell that story and, and really I want this is about my story you know it, it always is the end of the day um, and you know I guess if I had anything to add to it it's just that uh, it, it chronicles our journey as a band and you know kind of when I first replay, I mean first got involved with the band you know there's sort of two phases of it really and, and there's the, the young phase where I was very disengaged and unmusical and then there was the after the droogs came into it I I, you know I changed my perspective and uh, you know they some people joke that I changed my face and stuff but but you know a lot of that second phase really it brought us into uh, well it's just a lot about the world we live in today and and the various systems of uh of power and, and influence, um, according to the majesty of the royal crown, is talked about a lot in there, you know? Yeah. The, the uh, prestige of the BBC and, you know, what it means to be of a kind of a royal bloodline and how important and, and influential that is on the world, you know? Yeah. A little bit of, little bit of blood goes a long way, as they say, and uh, it's uh, they got a blood all over the place. They got blood in the Americas there, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, you 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 reminded me. Like pink blood. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm just joking. laughs> um, yeah. I, I've kind of gotten away, you know. I I think that you know a lot of the other things that I was hearing about the dribs and drabs that I was getting about this whole project. Um, kind of took me a little bit away from the music. So uh, I, I'm actually a, kind of appreciating you kind of because this this is a huge album, a huge project. And, um, love and bloodlines, that's what it is for me. It's all about love and bloodlines. So. Okay. 
Okay, loving bloodlines. And, and what about um, the future of Scotland? Did you have any thoughts on that? I know you, I feel like you've, you've spent a lot of time or you're going to spend a lot of time in Scotland. I've, I've been to, you know, we got uh, me and uh, Cinda, Cinda McGarvey, she, uh, we've got a little castle. <laughs> I call it the cottage, but it's up there in the Highlands. Uh, you, you know, it's very important to get away from, like, Ronnie and Raccoon and Cord. And, I mean, you know, Cord, he, he had his own projects to do. And, uh, yeah, I just want, I want the best for all of them. But uh, Cinder and I, we, we, you know, we've dabbled with Scottish politics, I suppose, a little bit, you know. Yeah. Uh, the marijuana laws. Horribly regressive, and you know we've had to get legal about that sometimes when we're traveling back and forth. I have to have lawyers with me; they're checking our luggage and stuff. You know. Oh yeah. Passports and certain more cavities. Thanks to my bloodline, it's sort of a short conversation. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that is amazing. Thank you so much, Saul. Well, I'll have to tell you about the whole joke about the you know, nickname Billy someday, too. But uh, there is a lot of disinformation out there, and so I just wouldn't want you to uh, you know, cough there's, off with any, especially this diesel garbage. I hate them. I'm a stone person. Okay. Well, that surprises me, but um, I get it. I mean, maybe it was just too much, but, you know... You were still kind of subconsciously um, kind of reflecting out what you were getting in from them, even though you like the Stones more. I don't know if you ask me. I don't, you know, I mean, that's how little their music meant to me. Like, the Ruddles were far better than mine. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. And it sounds like you didn't catch the Rain tour. Um, I mean, there's numerous uh, Beatles impersonator bands. I don't, yeah, I don't, you know. There's some good Stones cover bands out there I really enjoy. There's a wonderful U2 uh, band called Bluetooth in Ireland. They're wonderful, wonderful lads. But I, I don't know. I don't this Beatles thing. I wish people could. <laughs> Drop it. You could get confused. I watched a, much of a rooftop um, Beatles concert before yeah, I realized. Yeah. Now, so I realized then at, there was a point where I was like, wait a minute, this is them Beatles reenacting the rooftop Beatles concert. So I was blown away by that. I, I was totally fooled. Yeah, well, I, you know, just because um, when we're doing the and decided we couldn't use him anymore to produce. You know, it's his idea that we should throw one last set together and, and Marco said, let's go on the roof. Yeah. Did. But, you know, that we... I didn't know the Beatles did that, actually, until you just mentioned that. And sort of, you know, it was a stupid idea because it was pouring down rain. We were uh, <laughs> just got all wet. Uh, who got electrocuted? Anybody get electrocuted? That that sounds dangerous. Struck by lightning? Yeah, well, it wasn't just a lot of water. It was just pissing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to check the weather before you schedule a concert outdoors. I mean, it was the heat of the moment. I just thought, hey, the fucking done was locking here. So, you know, <laughs> Who could tell was just do something wild and spontaneous that we did. Um, we actually, one of the tracks might have made the album. I think the, uh, the uh, uh, World's Gone Mad is actually... Uh, oh, right from the roof. Yeah. Oh. We, we, we happened to... Uh, people got so excited, they actually uh, decided to put it on a, on a, a satellite feed across the world. So we, uh, you know... We did that, opened it with the Canadian national anthem to sort of show our support. And, uh, yeah. And it started raining. Uh, we, were, we were live, so we had to play through. But, you uh, know, <laughs> see, but the, 
Maco did, would never have – he wouldn't care because he had the Mac. I mean, you know, so we, he was ready for Maco it. Maco stayed remarkably dry. Yeah. His mother raised him well. It's, it's one time that it really protected him. <laughs> Saul, man. All right. Thank you so much. Um, we're going back to the uh, – yeah, we're going to go back to the party and um, and the American football. And um, thank you so much. We'll talk to you later. We'll talk to your people and let them know what's going on. That was great, love. We'll All righty. Uh, thank you so much, Saul. We'll see you. Bye-bye.